When it comes to exploring celestial objects, the ultimate achievement is to land on its surface. For a first time landing, the object's surface needs to be mapped to ensure a safe landing. This is usually accomplished with a lander attached to an orbiter doing the mapping. But on this pioneering first landing mission, we have a lander, but no orbiter, making the furthest landing from Earth with only a 2.5 hours window to do science. Titan is very interesting to scientists because it has a thick nitrogen atmosphere, among other things. Despite the fact that Titan is a natural satellite of Saturn and exhibits only about a tenth of Earth's gravity, the atmospheric pressure at the surface is about 1.6 times that of Earth at sea level. Not only that, but when Voyager 1 flew by 23 years earlier, it also detected organic molecules in the atmosphere and the potential for organic oceans and lakes. Titan looks a lot like Earth before life took hold and changed the atmosphere and surface. Since the average temperature on Titan is minus 180 degrees Celsius, the potential for biological development is very unlikely. This makes the surface and atmosphere pristine, but rich with organics. These organics react with sunlight, forming more complex and heavier compounds, which eventually rains down to the surface, forming potential lakes. It is because of these rich organics in the atmosphere that the Aerosol Collector Paralyzer Experiment, or ACP, was included on board Huygens. It samples the air as the probe descends to the atmosphere. Given that Huygens can only perform 2.5 hours of science because of limited battery, and over 83% of that time will be spent falling through the atmosphere, learning as much as possible about these organics is crucial to the success of the mission and the understanding of Titan. As a matter of fact, Huygens is classified as an atmospheric probe. So, how does ACP analyze these complex molecules? I'm reminded, the clock is ticking, so here we go. Huygens enters Titan's atmosphere at 1,270 kilometers above the surface. By the time it hits an altitude of 300 kilometers, the probe is moving at Mach 20, too fast and hot to conduct useful experiments with the ACP. As the probe's altitude hits 150 kilometers, its speed has dropped to Mach 1.5, slow enough to release a pilot chute. About half a minute later, the main chute is deployed. Soon after that, heat shield is jettisoned. Now at 140 kilometers from the surface and moving at 95 meters per second, ACP can finally get to work and do some science. It's important to note that the ACP is not an analytical instrument, but instead prepares a sample to be analyzed by the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. So, this is the internal workings of the ACP. The heart of the system is the oven. It is here that the aerosol we collect during the descent through Titan's atmosphere is heated. At about 140 kilometers from the surface and 120 minutes before surface impact, the ACP is activated. The ceiling cover is released and the oven is vented through valve P2 and VT into Titan's atmosphere. This is to ensure that no foreign particles are in the oven when pyrolysis starts later on. As the venting continues, the gate valve is opened and the filter motor is activated to push the collection filter through the open gate valve and into the sampling tube. The filter is used to catch the aerosol particles as they pass through the sampling tube. 110 minutes before surface impact. High altitude sampling begins as the collection filter traps aerosol particles from Titan's atmosphere. 97 minutes before surface impact. As the probe descends, the atmosphere becomes thicker and the parachute becomes more effective in slowing down the rate of descent of the probe, which consequently slows down the airflow to the collection filter. In order to maintain a strong airflow through the collection filter during the sampling phase, 
The pump unit is turned on, forcing air through the collection filter and venting it through the P2 valve back into Titan's atmosphere. 60 minutes before surface impact. At this point, the sampling phase is over. The pump is turned off. The collection filter is retracted back into the oven. Finally, the gate valve and VT are closed. The oven is turned on and heated to 250, then 600 degrees Celsius, allowing pyrolysis to occur in the aerosol sample collected by the collection filter. Pyrolysis is the process of decomposing a material by raising its temperature inside of an inert atmosphere. The inert atmosphere prevents unwanted chemical reaction from occurring during decomposition. One good example of the pyrolysis process is the conversion of wood to charcoal by heating pieces of wood inside a closed metal can. A small hole at the top allows the decomposing volatiles to escape, but prevents oxygen from entering the can that would cause oxidation. 46 minutes before surface impact. The gas product created by pyrolysis now has to be sent to the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, GCMS. Valve V2, P1, C1, and C3 are now open. Valve P3 is also then open to allow pressurized nitrogen gas from the tank GT to force the gas product through the GCMS. The GCMS is really two instruments linked together, a gas chromatograph and a mass spectrometer. The gas product is first forced through a special tube inside the gas chromatograph by the nitrogen gas. As the gas product interacts with the inside wall of the tube, they will temporarily stick to it through a process called adsorption. This is different from the process of absorption, where one gas is permanently surrounded by an absorbing material. So, as the gas product is adsorbed by the tube, it slows down the rate at which certain molecules flow through the tube. The end result is that the gas product is separated in time based on the molecules in the flow. As the flow exits the gas chromatograph and enters the mass spectrometer, it will be one type of molecule at a time. This makes it a lot easier to determine the type of molecule in the flow and avoid false identification. The mass spectrometer used to identify the molecules is a quadrupole mass analyzer. The flow coming from the gas chromatograph is first ionized. Once ionized, it's passed through a small hole into a chamber that has four metal rods. Only the vertical aligned pair is shown here for simplicity. The other pair is aligned horizontally. At the opposite end of the chamber is another hole which allows the ionized molecule to exit and then hit a detector. If no voltage is applied to the rods, then an ionized molecule will pass through the chamber unaffected and exit straight into the detector. However, if we apply a high frequency alternating voltage with some level of DC offset to the rods, then the ions will alternate between being attracted and repelled by the rods for an unequal amount of time based on the DC offset. For a given DC offset on the rods, only the ions with the correct mass to charge ratio will avoid hitting the rods and move through the chamber to be detected. Molecules of different masses will accelerate differently when subjected to the same force. This is a simplified description of the quadrupole mass spectrometer. At the end of this chain of instruments, we are able to determine the molecular composition in the gas product, which originally came from performing pyrolysis on the aerosol from the atmosphere. This entire process takes about 10 minutes to complete. 35 minutes before surface impact. While the GCMS was analyzing the first gas product, the ACP was being prepared for the second sampling of Titan's atmosphere at low altitude. This is an important step because comparing the chemical composition at both altitudes will help us build a model of the chemical reactions that are happening in the atmosphere. So once again, we turn on the pump unit, open the gate valve and extend the collection filter into the sampling tube. 31 minutes before surface impact. Pump unit is turned off, filters retracted into the oven and the gate valve is closed. Oven is then turned on and paralysis begins. 12 minutes before surface impact. Gas product is transferred to the GCMS since the probe has less than 12 minutes before impact and the gas chromatograph takes about 10 minutes, it is skipped by closing valve C1, sending the gas product directly to the mass spectrometer for analysis. 
two minutes before surface impact. The ACP is shut off. Final ACP data from mass spectrometer has been collected, and this concludes the aerosol analysis of Titan's atmosphere. Surface impact. However, data collection with other instruments continues after impact for an additional hour. Only 10 minutes was originally expected. Huygen confirmed many organic molecules in Titan's atmosphere. The existence of these molecules, which includes amino acids, may help us understand how simple molecules like methane and nitrogen can turn into very complex molecular building blocks of life. It's possible that we may find a chemical pathway from simple organic molecules to the precursor of self-replicating molecules such as RNA using only chemicals found on Titan. This is a big deal because Titan's atmosphere is thought to be similar to Earth's atmosphere right after its formation. In fact, NASA is preparing to collect more detailed data by launching a new mission to Titan in 2026 and landing in 2034. Welcome to Dragonfly. I'm DexDFX for Sensing the Universe.